Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking all about storytelling in landscape photography, or I mean really in photography in general, but it's going to be based off of landscape photography. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. So the first thing that I want to make nice and clear on is that you should always strive to photograph based off of the story that you want to tell in this specific landscape. In other words, you know, try not to compose based off of certain rules or guidelines that you were told, like the rule of thirds or the golden ratio or the rule of odds or 50-50 split or any of those type of things. It doesn't mean you can't compose to them, but don't compose based off of them. Don't compose to them because you were told that they are the way to go. You know, compose to them because they're the best option, because they make the most sense with the story that you want to tell. What I want to talk about right now is I want to talk about story. Because when I first started, I had no idea what it meant to tell a story in a photograph. What are you talking about? Am I supposed to write a novel or something? Thank God you don't have to do that. Or a poem. Oh my God, I suck at poems. I'm terrible at them. I feel bad for all my teachers that had to read them. Anyways, um, <laughs> so basically, what we got with stories. Well, there's three different types of stories that I want to mention in today's video. The first one is a personal story. Now this is the most basic, it's the most commonly used, and it makes sense because most of us, most of us photographers are photographers for personal reasons. You know, we go out there because we enjoy it. You know, we, we, we enjoy seeing the beautiful landscape and witnessing some special moments, right? And so a personal story is basically a story about our experience being out in the field. It's, it's what we enjoyed, what we liked the most about a specific location. And that's why we photographed that specific scene of that location is because we liked it the most. So for our first example, we have an image that was taken in Colorado in October 2021. Um, so this image, the main reason why I photographed it was because of this incredible moonscape. You know, I just loved how this, this entire mountain range was just uh, uh, capped with snow and at nighttime with the full moon, that snow was reflecting the moon's light and it just illuminated this entire landscape that you could see for, for, for miles, 50 miles, who knows? I don't even know. But it was just insane, it was otherworldly, it was ominous. And then with the cloud just haloing the top of that peak, man, it was just, it was incredibly mysterious, especially because I knew um, the trail that I was on, it wasn't much of a trail because it was covered in snow, I, I had to kind of make my own way. <laughs> um, but basically my main goal was to get up top of that mountain. And so I saw it from this, the, this lower viewpoint with the moonlight shining down on the, the clouds and the clouds just covering the, the peak of that. It looks so ominous. Um, and it was, just, it was just an incredible feeling, just absolutely incredible. Um, and you know, I, I, I had to take a picture because it was, it, it was such a special moment and that's what this image is about. It's about that experience. It's about what I felt when I was out there. And so I used composition and I used editing and post-processing to essentially tell that story better, right? So for my next example here, this is actually an image that I took on one, or in one of the videos on this channel this summer in August. Um, and as you can see, I mean, the main reason why I took this was because of the incredible light. Probably one of the, me the, the best types of light I've seen ever, ever. And it was taken three minutes away from my house, so that, that just makes it even more special. Um, I can go to this tree literally whenever I want. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I love this tree. It's probably one of my favorite trees uh, on earth. I know, that's crazy. It's crazy. Anyways, no, I just love the characteristics though, and, and the shaping and how the the, the 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 gnarly branches just sprawl the sprawl out from the trunk of the tree. It's just incredible. And then of course, when you bring in this atmosphere and this light, right? You got the the sun rising on um, the left hand side, and it just casts its golden light into this fog. And because the fog is going behind this tree, there's a couple of trees actually behind the tree, and it means that on the other side of those trees, it's not getting illuminated, it's in the shadow. So it essentially gets this warm to cool gradient and it's just, it's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And you know, why else would you not, you, there's no reason to not take a picture like that. 
Um, and so once again, this image is just is solely based on my personal experience and what I saw when I was out there. It's just about that. Um, and so, yeah, I and mean, we also have some nice yellow flowers in the foreground as well and some bushes uh, kind of framing that tree a little bit. Um, but it's all about the tree. It's all about the, 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 the fog and how it interacts with it. And uh, essentially the reason why um, I, I loved this scene so much. So here is my next example. This was taken in Olympic National Park um, in June of 2019. Um, I was actually on a backpacking trip with my dad. Um, we were out there for one, I think it was just one night. Yeah, it was one night. And the entire, uh, I guess, afternoon and morning we were there uh, up on this mountain or by this alpine lake, it was just completely shrouded in clouds. Complete whiteout, right? Couldn't even see probably 30 feet in front of you. It was just cloud, fog everywhere. Um, and it was, it was quite frankly very disappointing because I came up here to see incredible views of a lake and some alpine mountains. That's, that's, why, that's why I came up here and I didn't really get to see that. However, the morning we had to leave, there's a period of about five to 10 minutes where the clouds just slowly started to remove themselves away from this, the main peak, right? And it was at the perfect moment where that sunlight was hitting it. It, it was hitting its golden hour light onto that peak absolutely perfect moment and you can still even see in uh, right above the peak you can see the clouds um, kind of mo or moving away I mean you can't see them moving obviously it's not a video but um, you can almost see them starting to drift away from that that mountaintop and it was such a spectacular moment and the fact that it only lasted for five to ten minutes was just incredible and um, you know, man, the, the joy I had on my face when I was out there. Um, it just, it makes this image because every time I look at this photograph, I just see that moment. I see that, that trip and, um, you know, it's, 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 it's the image of that, that, uh, that time that I had there, that experience that I had there. And the funny thing is, is about 10 minutes after this, or maybe not even 10, maybe five minutes after I took this photo, Everything was shrouded in clouds again. All the clouds came back and you never would have even known that this moment happened. It was incredibly special, incredibly lucky, and um, I call this photo optimistic for a reason. Um, so that is telling personal stories, right? It's, like I said, the most, the most obvious one to do because it's, it's about what you, you saw in your experience out there. And so the next thing is a story about a landscape. Now this one's a bit more, it's, it's still fairly simple, very fairly simple, um, but it's not as, as common and uh, unless you're like some sort of uh, like a documenter, um, it, it's, it's a bit more common then because you're, you're, t you're essentially, you're telling a story about the specific landscape. So generally it's gonna be some sort of like special meteorological event uh, like, a, you know, lightning or thunderstorm or tornado or something like that, or maybe some sort of um, geological, you know, formations or, you know, some geographical interesting thing, something unique, something special within the landscape that's out of the ordinary is basically kind of what this is. Uh, this type of storytelling. And so I have this example here. This is a fairly abstract image, but this was taken um, actually in Wisconsin uh, this winter in January, um, and it, it, it was just incredible, right? Because with the mixture of waves crashing onto the shore, freezing temperatures and time, uh, essentially what you get is these incredible ice formations and ice, ice sculptures just plastered on everything, on the cliff walls, on the branches of the trees, on these old dead uh, uh, trunks of trees. It was just everywhere and it created these incredible uh, shapes and formations and um, you know simply this image was about that it was to tell that story you know of of what happens at this specific location every single winter you know is to the, to tell the events that create such a fantastic natural piece of art um, so that's kind of what this this image was about it's why I took it because I thought this 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 um, this sort of event and what was happening here was really cool and uh, part of that is also personal because I thought it was cool and so 
one thing you'll kind of notice is that with stories, they might kind of blend together. You know, some might have a bit of personal connection, some might have a bit more um, story about the landscape, and they might just blend together, and that's totally fine. They're never going to be completely perfect, or they may not be completely perfect. Um, so I have another example here. Um, this isn't the best example. It's not one of my favorite images, but um, I don't do this, I, I don't photograph to this type of story all that often. Uh, but this was basically a, a forest in Glacier National Park that was burnt down. I can't exactly remember the, the year it was burnt. Um, it was a wildfire. Um, but basically, it's, it, it's a photograph of this beautiful new growth, um, especially, of course, the magenta flowers. And they contrast very nicely with the, the charred uh, stumps of these, these burnt down trees. Um, and so it's telling a story of present day as well as the past and what had happened at this devastation of uh, a burning forest, right? And so once again, this image is all about the landscape. It really, it's not entire, it's not much about me or my experience about being out there. It's more about, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to take an image that showed how this, this once devastated forest has started to regrow and gain value once again. So, our next type of storytelling is by far the most difficult, and it's because it takes a little bit different type of thinking to understand it. You gotta think a little bit deeper, and that's an allegory. So if you don't know what an allegory is, it's basically, um, in this case, a photograph that shares a deeper meaning. Now, it doesn't have to be a photograph, it can be like a poem or some sort of writing or whatever, but obviously we're photographers, so it's a photograph. Um, so it's something that shares a deeper meaning, you know, something that's that's, that's not entirely obvious. So I'm gonna go over this example right here. This image, I took this image because, well one, I absolutely loved how this tiny little tree was able to just carry this incredible amount of snow on it, on its tiny little, not even stick-like limbs, it's a little sliver of limbs. Um, and I thought it was interesting how this, this tree was like the only young tree around. All these other trees were massive and grown and, and this tree was struggling, especially compared to the others. And that's what this image is about. It's about struggle and how this tree was having a difficult time uh, in, the, in the depths of winter. But it's not just about struggle. It's not just all that depressing. There's a sense of hope in it. And that's because we have the sun and that warm light coming in. And so literally that light is going to melt a bit of that snow and give that hopeness because it's, it's, it's melting, it's getting rid of it, right? But figuratively, we tend to feel, feel a morale boost, a, a bit of hope when we see sunlight and, and, and that warm kind of glow of light. You know, it, it boosts our well-being. And so figuratively, you know, this, this image is it's all about the struggle, but how there's still hope. There's still hope. I know it's a bit cliche, but that's an allegory for you. <laughs> um, so here is uh, another example. This is my last example. Um, and this is, once again, a simple photo of a tree. But what I absolutely love about this tree is it reminds me of a barbed wire fence and how behind it looks like a blissful, peaceful world. And this fence is essentially barricading you from accessing that, that, that peace, that serenity that you could have. And so, um, once again, it just shares that, that, that hidden meeting. And um, obviously, when, when a viewer is going to look at this image, they're not going to think that. That's not what they're going to think. But it's, it's why I took it. It's what inspired me to take an image. One thing to keep in mind is that the story is what will always inspire you to take a photograph. However, you should, you, you should be okay with the fact that the story does have potential to change and to morph as time goes on, right? You might be inspired to take an image for personal reasons, but then later on, maybe an allegory or like some hidden meaning starts to develop in that image. Maybe when you're post-processing it or something, and then it starts to change into this allegory of a story. Um, and so that's, that's totally fine. That's, that's, that's totally fine. But the story is always what's going to inspire you to take an image, right? It makes sense. 
And most of the time it's going to start out as a personal story, like we mentioned. Now, uh, I, I do also want to talk about, you know, why story is so important to figuring out right away. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, a, it's a fairly obvious thing, but you may not, you may not really pay too much attention to it. Um, and it's the fact that, like we said, the story is why you are taking a specific image. It's what inspires you to take an image. So if you understand what exactly that story is, then you will also understand what it is you like about this specific scene that you were photographing. And you'll also understand what you don't like about this scene or what you should just try your best to remove. Right? Once you know those two things, you can much, much better uh, build a composition, to form a composition. Because now you know what to place in your image and what to try to get rid of. It's, it's just a simple, it's a simple way to just help uh, boost your, your ability to compose a photograph. Now, you know, like I kind of mentioned before, instead of focusing on things like the rule of thirds or these other forms of guidelines, what I would highly recommend learning, and what I want to do a little bit more on this channel is talk a little bit more about some of these more abstract uh, concepts of composition, you know, things like balance and things like using depth and layers and using um, color and using separation and positioning, um, you know, all these different things. Um, I want to talk about a bit more about those on this channel, but learning those is going to allow you to further tell that story that you want to tell, right? So let's say, for example, you are in the woods photographing this massive dominant tree. It's a huge tree, huge. And you want to portray it as a dominant tree within the forest. Well, what do you do? Well, you use certain types of positioning, such as getting lower to the ground and looking up at the tree to make it feel more dominant within the forest. And especially getting closer to it as well, it just makes it look bigger. That's a great way to do that. And using composition um, to further illustrate the, the story that you want to tell, um, I mean, it's the only way to do it. So you might as well, you might as well learn it <laughs> because you, you, you got to do it. And um, like I said, story is by far the most important thing in, in, in a photograph, right? A photograph is all about story. It's why you're taking an image. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video to be interesting and helpful. Um, if you did, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions or concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. Um, I'm always responding to you guys, so um, I really I really enjoy when you guys comment down there. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you like this channel's content. And uh, well, with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. See ya. Bye-bye.